Hello everyone, face of you. Welcome back. This is more Ace Attorney. We're gonna be may I, you know what? I'm not even gonna I, I think we have probably gonna have another day. Because uh I thought we were gonna be done yesterday, but this chapter just opened all sorts of worms and a bunch of side stuff. So I'm guessing we have at least another stream. So uh I might, <laughs> might switch uh this week to just be ace attorney, see if we can finish it out. Um but uh, where do we leave off? We we're talk yes, talking to Edgeworth. We were talking to the man himself. Gmail isn't responding. We'll close the app. Why isn't Gmail responding? That's weird. Um, let's move me up there. I think that's good enough. Um, what happened? We we haven't actually examined any rooms, but we came in here and he threw out this little piece of paper, right? His, his little uh, fanfic about him asking me out on a date uh i wonder or, right we gotta do these things i wonder what he was writing before come on mr wright let's take a look are you crazy edward is sitting right there what the fuck yeah shouldn't we wait till he leaves i'm glad it's not gonna make us wait till he leaves to be honest but still let's distract him i'll check it out how will he not hear you uh uh, hey, Edwards, uh, you want to go on a date? The hell? Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh, no, he's falling to the ground. <laughs> Hold on. First, let me see what the girl's doing crawling around my feet. Yeah, see, how? We're not too bright, are we? He didn't even look. Recommendation? What's with the sly face? If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says letter of resignation. Oh. Not recommendation. The other thing. Resignation? Edward, you don't mean. Entire, right? I feel as if something inside me has died. I need something of yours inside me instead. Um, anyway. None of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked. You don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself for what I've done. And no one else should forgive me either. Good lord, the edge on this dude. Uh oh, I think he's serious. Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation. I wonder if I can use it for anything. Let her resignation put into the pocket. Edgeworth discarded leather resignation. He's serious. Shit. I didn't know. He, has he always had two suit T sets? I didn't know he had a second one down here. The work desk is quite tidy, as one might expect. A nice desk, easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's flashed so high I can see my own reflection. What was that? Strange one. I just pictured Detective Gumshoe. He'll take the name plaque as a souvenir. Don't. He'll sue you. <laughs> fucking Emma just out here fucking five finger discount and everything. Is anything else in here changed? It all looks the same. Besides that paper. Hey, a chessboard! I'm not up on my chest, but it looks like blue is a bit in the side. Yeah, it's the same thing. What's up, Kira? On your lunch break? How's, how's work treating you? <laughs> uh, it's just surrounding a pond with spiky hair. No, it's nothing. <laughs> See, he looks, he looks too deep into things. All right, where can we move to? We unlocked some new stuff. Right. Lunch mommy's down here. That's our office. Uh, Lana's in there. Where Edworth is. Oh, we were trying to get to the, the, the chief's office. Hey. 
and he wouldn't let us in without um a reason. Could this be the reason? Hey, look, Edgeworth is resigning. What's that crumpled up paper? Is that too big of a word for you? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he never not serious? That's true. I, has he ever told a joke? I don't know if he's ever told a joke. Yeah, we found the paper. I can't believe they pushed him this far. Mr. Edwards really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was as cold as ice, too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We even tried him. Detective. That's it. I've made up my mind. We're dragging him down here. Putting him in jail until he gives up this resignation business. What? Here, take my ID card. That's what we needed. We can't do that. If someone found out... Even though you're off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depends on, depending on how this case turns out, I may already be good as terminated. Aw. What? So at least let me do this for Mr. Edgeworth's sake. I fucking love Gumshoe, dude. He needs to be protected. All right, detective, thank you. Gumshoe's ID tucked swiftly into pocket. Police department ID card allows access to the areas of PD open to detectives. Fuck yeah, dude! Oh! Let's go. Uh... This weird-ass fucking pipe organ. You warned me about the paper a few weeks ago, did you? Somehow I kept missing it on my playthrough. <laughs> it's, you just kind of forget something. Like, when you go through these long streaks of just, like, just talking to people and not having to examine things, you forget that you can do that. Here goes, Mr. Wright. Click. Beep. Boom! It was booby-trapped. Good lord, he's got here. We're in! Can anyone find us now? Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out! <laughs> she fucking came with us? <laughs> ah! Did we all just pass out? Collective pass out? That sounds safe. Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! It's like some gumshoe. What are you just doing sneaking up on us like that? I, I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something we might go wrong. So I came too. If you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? Yes. Oh. Gumshoe's ID crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. What the fuck? Hey, don't do that to my card. I'm so confused. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here. So I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. Okay. I, I guess that works. You really do want to get fired, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now come on. Let's see what that what we can find out. You've got a bad feeling about this. Alright, get out the way. Wait, can I talk to you first? Oh shit. A desk on the other side of the room. Is that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Anyone using it now? No, sir! It's entirely Chief Dan's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. Well, that's gonna come back to bite him in the ass, isn't it? That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us so himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. Ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk? No one except Chief Gan and the cleaning lady who's in here each morning. Still, two years have passed since the incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. We'll see about that. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of those SL9 crime scenes. 
I mean, that's the only reason we're coming here, isn't it? But yes. You don't think. Uh, you wouldn't be. Oh. Ah, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> now then, let's look around for a bit more. Hey, hold on. Not so fast, buddy. Huh? What is it? When someone tells, tells you don't worry about it, you're supposed to say, to start bothering you, pal. <laughs> you don't just gonna let it go like that. No, I'm totally gonna let it go like that. Sorry. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> okay, so what's bothering you? You do don't think. Chief can't. I'd be a suspect, do you? Shh. What? He's right, Mr. Murray. What do we think of him? Chief can't, so it's finally come to this. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings yet. There you go, ignoring me again. My bad. Uh, can you scooch, please? Gant is creepy, dude. This isn't a safe, is it? It looks like a safe, Phoenix. Safe! That word is rife with intrigue. Uh, okay, if you say so. It looks like a code needed to be entered in this panel to open it. Seven digit number. I think I just might know it. Oh, I know it. I got your number. You think you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know. You want to try my birthday? It, it's. Oh, God. Come shoot. I have a better idea. It goes nothing. Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Nailed it. Damn it. Well, I'm out of guesses. I guess that wasn't it. I was... Uh, oop, okay. I was so sure that was the number. Maybe we should show the check court record again. A seven digit number. Is it just sevens? That is the least secure fucking passcode ever. That's like one step barely below just a bunch of ones. Bingo. What number? Oops. What number did you enter? Whose birthday was that, pal? Birthdays aren't seven numbers, bro. Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. The number of the mysterious executive officer, officer who entered the room that day. You mean... 777777-7? That number? I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only mean one thing. The Chief Gant's ID number. That, if he was one short this time, that means he averaged the right number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Yeah, we're just standing here talking right in front of this open safe that we busted into. Oh, yeah, I, I just remembered the number. <laughs> it, it's kind of hard to forget. Is there anybody in there? How much does he have stashed away? That's what you're worried about? Look, it's a... Uh. That jar handle. A shot from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? There's something else in here, too. Why? Dude, this this guy deserves to be caught. What's this? What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. With a handprint on it. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. 
You think Chief made up that design? Oh my god, Gumshoe. I love you, but... Oh. Uh, I don't think so. Ah. Uh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? Is that the, all that's in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it. A broken shard from a cup. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Fucking dude. Wait, now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the SL9 incident? Come on, there's got to be something we can show the detective. You got it. Let me uh, look around this room a little more, though. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk. Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Ah, it's you two. Chief Gant! He put that paper... Oh, wait, he put that paper he was reading in his desk. Ooh, see, I forgot about that. Arrow Gant. <laughs> I think the safe matching his ID number is a big sign of arrogance. Yeah, and the fact that his fucking ID... It's that number... I'd be like, this is the least secure number of all time. I'm not using this. I wonder what he was, re he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Oh, shit. It's that one that uh, Edgeworth was talking about. Hey, look at the case name. Ah, huh? SL9 incident. I wonder what this is doing here. He's fucking the culprit. Or he's not fucking the culprit. He is the fucking culprit. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what? You know about evidence lists. Normally your twipe is long? That's right! I guess there was a lot of it. There wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. A list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. What did the other half of the list be doing here? I knew it! The chief must be hiding something about that case! It would appear so. Evidence list added to the court record. Holy shit, we're finding so much stuff. List of evidence in the SL9 incident was ripped in half in this part is all I got. Ripped in half and no one did, could figure out that it was ripped in half? Wait a minute. Wait, why did it say I didn't observe this yet? There it goes. This is the real deal, isn't it? The armor and these weapons. Sure is, pal. The chief doesn't care for imitations. First the pipe over and now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? What? You mean they're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. I don't have any taxes to pay. <laughs> Shh. Be careful on what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Plus, you could go check right now. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. <laughs> Cut it out! You guys don't know how scary that guy could be. You can see pretty far from 15 stories up if you were to drop that suit of armor from here. At first glance, at the first, Chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? Why didn't he? They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh. Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. The chief's organ is sure a sight to behold. It's fucking so much money. Occasionally we hear him playing it from the criminal affairs department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. Good lord. When a detective, or when a detective screws up, the chief calls him to his office. He makes him listen to the organ for hours. Are they playing his organ? Wah, wah. What's so bad about that? Music soothes the soul. It's terrible. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in their ears. That makes them an effective police... Placement. This is. Like, I think we're living in the darkest timeline. This might be close. 
So it's an instrument of punishment, literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? You never listen to anyone anyway. <laughs> That's beside the point. Uh, slide. So why don't you slide? Look at that giant window. It's identical to the other one. Makes you want to crash through it and jump outside. You okay, Gumshoe? Uh, this is the 15th floor. I know! I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since breaking detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Gumball. That's what I'm gonna call him from now on. He, he's Gumball. Note to self, this detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. As long as he doesn't go crashing through that window. And he gets fired. Don't say that! Oops. <laughs> These shelves are most mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey! This is when Lana and I went to that theme park! Oh, I thought it was a picture of a flower. Looks like a picture of a flower. And this desk is a stark contrast to Gantz. The shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them when she transferred to the prosecutor's office. It's the same thing for... Okay. This was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? Nah. Chief Cat must still keep... Keep it clean in memory of his partnership. They were the stuff of legends. They are the stuff legends are made of. Does he keep it in the memory of her or in the memory of the crime? This was taken on the day two years ago. Oops. This was taken on the day two years ago. The day Joe Dark ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then he went along to Chief Gant to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? <laughs> Love him. Um, what if I present to him these things? That's what the Chief was reading before, isn't it? You know, when we first came in here... Yeah, it looks like the right side, right side of the form's been torn off. I'm sure this list really was only half the whole thing. How did no one realize it was torn in half? Something else is begging me more than that. Take a look at the back of the form, pal. Oh shit! Good thing we did it. Back. Uh, check. What the? Why would you keep this? I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. Oh, was this used to make Emma think she saw what she saw? Uh-oh. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh, uh, it's nothing. What a strange reaction. Moving about like that, Mr. Wright. I better not forget about this picture. That was weird. That was out of, uh... Normal behavior of Wright. Executive Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put the jar that back together. Ah, uh, those were the days. That was like a... Two days ago. It's kind of really to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right! When the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found? There you go. You mean this one? That one was in the... That one was in the safe? Yes, that one! 
I was in the safe. Oh my god. He's gonna say something far off base. Somehow I got in here. Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Hell's bells. Christmas bells. Church bells. Let's see if it fits. Uh, assemble fragments. Here, let me see that shard. I think we got this. Go ahead, pal. Show us what the rookie can do. It's a raid. Here's some glue. If we can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. Here it goes. Were we just carrying around this huge ass thing? Ah, here's how you rotate. Got it. Wait, what? I can't move it. There we go. There! It fits like, it fits like a charm. That, of course, means... Chief can't willingly and only had it hit a piece of this evidence. J or hit a piece of this jar in his safe. Yes! In other words, you can seal the piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. Hey guys, get a load of this! What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. Oh. Okay. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? There's also reddish spots. What are you getting at? That's supposed to be me. That's blood. We know it's blood. I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in his safe? He's the culprit, bro. Unstable jar updated in the court record. That is... Why would you have that? This is begging to be knocked over. A swift guff to the wind knocked that over. Evidence from the SL9 is a final fragment found in Chief Gant's safe. Blood trace. How do we... Do... That's fingerprints. Hey, I just bought some of that stuff. Now I can go around detecting blood traces too. Like a real detective. <laughs> oh, is that a new type? I've never seen that bottle before. I was about to fully misread that. Add three inches to your base. Height, your base height. Base height? Hey, let me see that. Oh, God. Living tall, new and improved like <laughs> hair growth for me. You mean this can't detect any blood traces? God damn it, Gumshoe. Uh, well, uh, it's not the same thing as Luminol. So that's why the lady at the counter had that smirk on her face. Oh, God, dude. No. I'm trying to use it. Get out of the way. How do I use it? Examine options. Nope. Uh court record. Here you go. Spray, here you go. Nope. I was one. Oh shit! Good thing I fucking did that. I was gonna. I was wanting to spray the jar. Oh, this area must have been covered in blood. Is this from that incident? It must be. When Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, two years have passed. So the reaction kind is kind, reactions kind of dull. So murder really did it pl take place here. Okay. Well, let's spray some more. Okay. But I wanted to... Check. Can 
I spray it here? Hey, look here. It's hard to make out, but there's a dark red stain here. Mm, looks like blood. This piece that the chief has is different, though. Blood stains on the other piece are just spots. But this one's a line. It is odd. Does it mean something? Leave? You let us leave, okay. Let's go talk to... Do not ruin Emma. Huh? This. Right, please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. Fuck! You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I don't care about that. This is a different thing. I'll pass on the tea, but just tell me about this case. Oh, God damn it! This is the same thing. He doesn't care about that. What about this? Fuck. Oh, <laughs> I thought I was saying that at first and then I saw uh, Emma's voice. Oh, it was Emma's voice. If I show him the best evidence, that is the best evidence. Fucking. <sighs> Should I have done this? Can I not just use this, like... Oh. Where is that? Wait. What happened to that leather piece? What? No. What happened to that leather piece? because you didn't prove it's relevant yet. Oh, he only lets us take... I thought I just needed to prove that one piece. Fuck. Um... To give you any information. So that's why I have to get it out of my system now. You understand, don't you? Don't be so negative, Detective. We do not... We do want you to share your information, though. Ah, who am I fooling? I never had anything useful to share to begin with. God damn it. Ugh, I gotta say positive. <laughs> Fuck. Um...
Good lord, there's too much shit in this case. tried spray in the safe um examine court record i sprayed all over the place and the only place that showed blood was over there god fucking damn it yeah there's nothing here the only thing was over there. Right there. We need to find the the knife bit for the the award. present the finger maybe that would be fucking weird but I'll try it hey we have a fingerprint crit detective gumshoe i'd like you to have a look at this hey i know what that is so you want to take some fingerprints that's a great idea oh shit that was it why wouldn't it just let me do it oh that's a great idea detective all right go to town sheesh why, why did we have to show him the fingerprint kit when it just let us spray the blood? It's so confusing. Have a good one, dude. Have a great night at work. What are you doing? Wasting out your hand like that. Go ahead. Take my fingerprints. Oh, God. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Huh? Come on! Oh wait, this is me. Come on, this isn't the time just for jokes. We're talking about the cloths we found in the safe. Oh! Yeah! I knew that! The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? Okay, Mr. Ray, let's check for prints. Bring the powder on the cloths. Once they've been absorbed in the prints, blow the rest away. Are you my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. Shika, 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 shika. What the fuck? Oh. Dust it up. That's probably good enough, right? Speed of blow. Wow. I'm mm, giving my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? It does look like we've got a clearer result from the print. Okay, let's try a different figure then. This one looks pretty solid. Dusting all this cocaine. Yo, there we go. But 
Is it not done? Okay. Um, it's gonna be Gant. Where is he? Nailed it. 100% match. No. How can this be? What are his fingerprints doing here? Wait, what? Was I on Emma? I thought I was on Gant. Oh shit. Hey, you found a match? Whose fingerprints were they? Huh? Uh, it seems like the prints are too old. They ain't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. I thought I was on Gant. <laughs> hey, you! Over here. What's going on over here? What are the kids' prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep, or let's just keep this information from Emma from Emma from for now. That is out of character. Here, maybe you should hold on to this. I'm the chief can't save evidence for something, but what bears Emma Sky's prints? Hmm. Well, was I any help? Of course, you let us in. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. That's gonna be what's the name. Now that wasn't very kind of you, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Isn't that right? You in the coat. <laughs> Chief Gant! You didn't think he'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. As I was walking to my meeting, I happened to look out the window and saw a stray dog run right into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. You mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. I don't see that that safe is still open. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. So sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Hey, sir! He's gonna get fired. Drop off your ID card on the way out. You won't be needing it anymore. But, sir! He's fired. Oh, man. Now get out! Y y y yes, sir! We'll be on our way, too, then. Wait! You the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. That's creepy. Uh, me, sir? I'd like a word with you. No. One, she's underage, so she doesn't have to speak to you without a guardian. So fuck off. But sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair! You're free to go. Not without Emma. No. Mr. Wright! What the fuck? You can't leave her! That's super illegal. Good pal. I told you once, I told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off, office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gant was hiding in his office, I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? Not really. I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. How did we just leave Emma? After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. That's super illegal. Isn't it? Don't you have to have like a guardian present or something to talk to police? I don't know. I've never been arrested. Knock on wood. Uh, so your sister was taken into custody. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come for some, or come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. 
I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all that I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. That's true. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed his active goodman. You know, I think I finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick headed is the term he used, I believe. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Tell me the story, Lana! Showing her, oh, fuck. Showing her evidence isn't going to do me any good now. I've got to get Lana to tell me everything she's hiding. Mr. Wright, you're evolving by leaps and bounds. I'm starting to see, see the hunger in your eyes. Like the wolf. So I don't show any evidence to get her to talk? That's fucking weird. I have to admit I was more than a little perplexed, or perplexed at first. I insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not you that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's not that you're unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so because of a certain individual. <sighs> what an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say. So you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think you're afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. And now that we, we just handed over her sister, now she's... Oh, God damn it. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I ask is the person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposedly frightened of? Who's the person's name? <laughs> I kind of want to do Meekins. Person we you fear is this. <laughs> to be honest, there's someone a bit scarier. Someone scarier than Beacons? Who would that be? Wait, me? Why you, of course. Clever. Me? Yes. You seriously believe that you're saying what you're saying, don't you? Now that's scary. I um you seem to have the markings of a criminal in you, but with all your fallacious accusations. You're gonna spend tonight in the cell next to mine. If you ask me, you're the scary one. The fuck? Well, Miss Guy. Well, Miss Guy? Aha. Mr. Wright. You're addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Would you please tell me a bit more about what you think now? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second fan of the investigation. Yes, you, but also one other. Damn it, Gant. What's up, Space? Enjoy the cookie. Daddy cookie. Oh. Hello. I'm getting a cookie. There you go. Snackums, snackums, snackums. How you doing? How's your evening? I thought today was Wednesday. It's not. The days, or the, the weeks barely started kicking off. If you intend to accuse Chief Kent, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Kent falsified evidence in that case. Blam! Don't prove in the Chief's wrongdoings? Here it is! 
I think evidence proves someone is doing something wrong, all right. That's not the chief. Who would that be? Why you, of course. Me? Yes. You seriously believe what you're saying, don't you? Oh, that's scary. I, uh... You seem to have the makings of a criminal in you. Oh, fuck. Okay, so it... Makes us restart if we choose the wrong thing. Okay, let's show him the... this. I just found this in a safe in the chief's office. This jar piece and this piece of cloth. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SL9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gant himself. Now tell me! I slammed the desk behind her. Uh, out of sight, that's cool. Why are you taking all the blame for him? Shame, Mr. Wright. I'm doing just fine. I, uh, wish it was later on in the week, but we're doing fine. Very sleepy. I laid down for a li little bit before stream. I don't know if it helped. Maybe a little bit. <sighs> Excuse me, he says as he yawns. It's as you surmise. I cannot disobey the chief's orders, even if it means being found guilty for murder. Yes, you can. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice, but to, no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman. Or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. You'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edgeworth's car. Why didn't she just fucking turn him in right then? I don't get it. Yo, Clappy, my dude! How you doing? Haven't seen you in a hot minute. How's life treating you? I saw you were playing some uh, Magic the Gathering the other day. Just as suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you are not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edward's car. The trunk's lock was broken, and I discovered the murder weapon while inspecting the body. And the murder weapon? You mean Edward's knife? No. When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the SL9 incident. Serial killer Dark Joe Dark's knife. I couldn't just leave the knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. What? So she wasn't technically lying. She said she stabbed him. That would be Edgeworth's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were sh shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up cutting my hand. That's where the blood puddle came from? Holy shit, it's all coming together! That is the reason for a bandage on your right hand. Yes, it seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the knife in. It's Star, huh? Holy fuck. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? Yeah, it's something, something sus, sussy. It's been life. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been life. Our life has, uh, not been easy for the non-one percenters, right? It took a lot of work to finally close the dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to pre prevent that by whatever means possible. So you hid Dark's knife? The weapon used to stand the detective was evidence in the Joe Dark case. Before it got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So you wrapped a knife in your scarf and hid it. An edge the exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister. To tell her what happened and ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma? Oh, dude. I didn't want anyone in the forest to know about this. You fucking would've got your sister in deep shit. That would explain why Emma was, is so confident. 
about Lana's innocence. Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. Bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. Oh. A phone call to, pat to Patrolman Jake Marshall. The Marshal? Why would you call him? Because he would be interested. The lead investigator for SL9 incident has been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. She's fucking big brain. Lots of wrinkles. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade on his own. Oh. You mean... Not wanting this case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already, so or, he had already stolen the ID card. But it seems he hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. Lana. You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright. Both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please. Don't pursue this any further in the court tomorrow. Lies! I'm putting him on the stand and getting the justice for all of you. Tomorrow's trial. There are only one way to drive off Lana's demons. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Well, we got to go find yourself a bottom. Andres! Detective Goodman's real murderer. What went down in the chief's office two years ago? TBC. All right, we, maybe we will finish this tonight. What time is it? It's eight? Maybe. Mayhaps. This is the defendant lobby, all right? But there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? Where's Emma for that matter? It almost seems as if... Something's been happening behind the scenes. Oh, something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth! No, you, you've already figured it out. The owner of the 777777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding the I this ID record. If that number does belong to the whom you suspect, no doubt will, ma will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Roscutter Sky will be found guilty. She didn't do it! Figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here. To hear what you have to say. Interesting. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. You don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. Zing! If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? Yes, sir. Cheese and crumpets together later? First date? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. All right, let's do this. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Ooh, of course he does. Motherfucker. But, but before that, the police chief has a proposal to me. Chief Gant. He's as orange as his suit. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, OG. And back in the pool to the pool again? 
Oh, right. That's what he means for the judge. Oh, we've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a good one. Don't th think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is your proposal of yours? Creepy face. Here it comes. Here it comes. Lana. That is to say, defendant. Has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. What? She wants to do what? She wouldn't speak to me about that? Having heard that she intends to... Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Mmm, sussy baka. Shit. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Fuck no! Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodwin. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. Nope. Lana! Objection! Yeah, object! You can't! Your Honor! The defendant's claim ha does not change the defense's plea. <laughs> That's funny. In that case, Mr. Wright. I was gonna say she's gonna fire us. I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit and I write to an attorney. The prosecution may lack it. direct evidence against me. It has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self representation. The request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Come on, Edgeworth! Ooh, Edgeworth's gonna come save the day and object, right? Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds it defended. Objection! Objection! Yeah, Edgeworth! Thank you, you fucking legend! Ugh! One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edward. The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. <laughs> this is great. Any ruling at the stage would certainly be premature. Come now, where are they? Get off the stand. I understand this is difficult. This is a difficult time for you. But why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut? Hmm. I'll oh, see. He's a. He's threatening. Oh, and he's scared. Hmm. I don't think I'll ca I care for your tone, Chief Gant. Yes! Oh, get him! Get him! What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes? Yeah! Get him! Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would, you would have me be. Get him! Get him! <laughs> Freaking rights over there is like, I'm fucking rock hard! <laughs> this sudden confession. From the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal struck beyond the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not heaven uh, operates as you do, worthy. Hmm, I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? Well, oh, to whom? I can't do his voice right now. To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Sky. Is she even here? I request the court hears her testimony. You can't object. Did she not have a... They didn't give her a voice. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm ex exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Scott. Yeah! The exposure to truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an ev even greater tragedy to avert one eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Where are they? Live to regret this. Mark my words. Oh, God, you're so creepy. Miss Emma Sky, please take the stand. Ooh, Edgeworth! Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh, that's sad. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Uh, I'm a student. 
My name is Emma, Emma Sky. Occupation? Uh, I'm Lana's little sister and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark and the Joe Dark killing. Is this correct? Yes. I I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. <gasps> Excuse me. Mr. Edward, please remember the trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. But, well, okay then. Oh, I hear it. I was that anything. I, I'm pretty certain it's Edward's voice. It makes me yawn all the time. He sure gave in fast. Now. Please testify about what happened to you two years ago. You got this, Emma. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. You got this, Emma. I believe in you. Oh, I don't want to badger her. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. I'll never forget I saw him that instant. The man raised up his knife and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Yeah, that was definitely Gant. It's a good thing. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does his testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? It will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You gotta admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin this cross-examination. Please don't yell at her. Oh, we're gonna have to show her that picture. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Oh, don't yell at her. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second command under deputy chief of police guard. Police er, Emma Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same office. Whew. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. I dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day, too. The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Promise to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. Man? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything out of him that we could lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take to the elevator. You must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Why would you take the elevator if you're running? Those things are slow and they can be stopped. And he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a little noise coming from the outside, so I... I opened the door to have a look. That's when I saw him. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? That day there was two people present. Present during Dark's questioning. Deputy Chief Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. I almost far forgot about Gant. Neil Marshall had just received the King Prosecutor's Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark ran me, I thought I was good, as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in? I don't clearly remember what happened then, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Drake and just the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out? Wait a minute. The electricity went out. That could have been the time when Dammit did 
did some uh, damage. <sighs> if it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right. It's just the lightning flashed again outside. A sudden flash left an unforgettable, unforgettable image on the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. And they, they, um, I get, I'm guessing Gant ended up convincing her that it wasn't him that he saw, that she saw. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. You're gonna hear more. So you spoke to Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's when, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. But that's the picture I have. Picture, yes! I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? That's about the picture. This picture. Oops, this picture. The witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. Why would you say that? The list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if, had, if we added this statement to your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Mm, we're gonna... We're not gonna present her anything yet. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could. Without the investigation, I can still see it now whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died. Yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. But, but I, I did draw it, I swear. I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Well, anyway, let's continue. I'd seen that imprinted an image on your mind. Can you please describe it to us? Man. Man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. That must have been a real shock. Now's not the time, Phoenix. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. The lightning struck and the lights went out. Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. I was thrown aside and the two began wrestling each other. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie. Alana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about this as she can. I was waiting my- Oh, okay. Now we can- Bop, bop, bop. Oh. You mean this picture? Pictures on the back of the killer. I got a very bad feeling about this. Can I, I can do this, right? Ooh, music cut out. We win. Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And you would insist on denying its existence? <laughs> it's like we're fighting for the same cause and blaming each other about who can win the hardest. Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. It may very well be. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. The other half. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over. It, ah, what's this? Stabination. Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. Indeed. You may appear to be wrestling here. Wrestling with a knife? What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? <laughs> Only prosecutor in charge. Of, oh, uh, oops. What are you doing? What is the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Holy space, his voice. For some reason. 
Yeah. These lists. They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists put together to form one. How did no one realize that? <gasps> you can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious that what happened. Two years ago, only half the evidence in the case ever reached you. What? What? Yeah, boy. Order. Order! Miss Guy. Why did you draw your picture on the back of su such an important list? Boom! Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor! You are right, Mr. Wright. Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. How has nobody realized this? Yes, it, oops, yes, it's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Taco Bell. Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... that... thing. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! That's that? That thing? That thing that was dancing in the evidence room? Clearly, this is the act of vandalism in the work of a certain chief detective. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Gosh. Evidence list restored and updated in the court record. List of evidence in this online is half of this list was found in Ken's desk. Very well, witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yes, sir, Your Honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seems hyped, bro. She seems to be thinking about something else when she was looking at the picture. Something's not right. Picture Andrew two years ago. Whoops. This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. I could say I myself fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Well, that was really short. You think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind? Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows dark, dark to murder. This clearly shows show dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. Does it? Does it though? The defense may now begin its cross examination. <sighs> Does it look strange to you? Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um, I think I drew it two or three days later. At first, I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, during the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Sky. Two, two or three days later, the memory should still be fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why these pictures painted all black? Because of the fucking silhouette from the flash, dude. The flash of lightning was so bright and all you could see were shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who'd come to your rescue? No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lightning was so bright, I was knocked to the floor. Oh, was she knocked to the floor because someone threw the, the jar at her? Is that going to have her blood on it? Knocked to the floor? Rick had a tight grip on me. But when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around. 
And that's when the lightning flashed. Grandma, I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? What happened after the lightning flashed? After that, I must have fainted. It's convenient for Gant, isn't it? You mean you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I I'm sorry. The flash of light. Lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. You really need to torture the girl any further. What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. <laughs> anyway, this, pi this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. It wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the detective? Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? No, no, of course not. I better watch out or you might be find some way to cut my salary. <laughs> I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Huh? Uh, well... That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind, and yet there's clearly a contradiction there. two years ago. The flash is so bright, all I could see were the shadows. It's gotta be here. Shit! Stabbed in the back! He was stabbed in the front. I'm glad I was going through that evidence. I would not have seen that. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains blatant contradiction. I'm sorry, Emma. It's not your fault. What? But, 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 I still remember just like it was yesterday. We're not blaming you for anything. He's still right. Perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. The part of this picture contradicts the officer's autopsy report. He's facing... Ah, oh, fuck. It's because of the drawing stinks! <laughs> Mr. Ray, how could you... Oh! Wait, was this actually right? Yeah, I didn't think so. The act of make, making an innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. I guess that means I shouldn't shift the blame to others. Yes, well, so long as the defense has learned his lesson. I better take another look at the autopsy report in this picture. Uh, we know what it is, but... Why didn't we... He's facing us. Oops. I didn't mean to push that button. Take that. There it is. That's weird. Why couldn't it be that he was facing him? Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. That's what counts as the tip is broken? That's fucking weird. Even I don't... Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? The tip is broken, too. If, if I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off the victim's body. It was a was a piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not... I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. 
And where, pray tell, would you possibly see the problem? It's obvious. Ooh, it's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Bam! Ah, what's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was perhaps the knife was broken by home forehead. And how did get the piece get in his body? Sorry, but afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right. What does this mean? So many objections. The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. Yo! Injection. Objections for days. It's an objection injection. That's why I asked her for so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at that time. She was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There's another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on ice. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. Oh shit, dog. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ugh. Test the blood. Order. 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 Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me once again to go over the evidence. Events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. See, it's that fucking thing, I'm telling you. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with them and Gan. During this questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Drake. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there's a lie. Hmm. Hi. I'm not lying. The man really was holding... The man was really holding a broken knife. He's holding the piece of the award, man. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being be two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark... Go darks, could there have been one? There is one! If the witness in this if the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emina really did see a broken knife. I assume then that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please be, feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this! Here's the real murder weapon. Shit. It's not there. Will this count? This better count. If anything's broken here, it's you. Huh? I'm sure this must be always very amusing to you, Mr. Ray. May I remind you that the famous honest guy hangs in That's the one, though! Sorry, Your Honor. Please give me another chance. Murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There's only one way. Take a look at this. What? not gonna be this I mean it's flat fuck all right now she's guilty what? oh 
Oh, the picture. I probably could have done the picture. You lose. Oh shit, there was no, there was no like. Oh no! Shit. I forgot there's like no auto saves. Oh my gosh. Oh, I knew I should have saved. And it was like, no, because you're already below half life. Blah, blah. You wouldn't have to do all this, you big dumb. Is there a way to super speed past? Wait. Shut up. Go away. Options. Options. Court record. Options. Was there a way to pass through this? Or is that a different game? Oh no. Mm. Oh, she her hands behind her back because it's her <laughs> like she's over there just crossing her fingers. Oh my gosh. How brutal. Objection. Yeah, it's worth. Uh, oh, uh. Holy crap. I'm gonna have to skip through like an hour of content. I'm sorry, Emma. Testify, blah 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 All right, I think we're gonna have to press her still to unlock her additional dialogues, maybe. Sped down that a little too fast, started zoning out. That, that picture, that's gotta be the solution, right? All right, we'll save shortly. Just you, we're going to get to that. Bloppy, bloppy, bloppy. Draw a picture. Seems to be lost. Hold it. I got you. And I'm gonna check the back of this because it's has the little revealy thing again, just in case. All right. 
And then we gotta check his other half. Holy crap, we went through all this dialogue? <laughs> Woo! Wait a minute. This is, okay. This is the, the other half thing. Flip it over! <laughs> it's so goofy. Uh, what are we doing in this part? What's wrong with Emma? Oh yeah, she, something seems goofy. I don't know if we have to press her on all these. What was this part? This is the picture I drew two years ago. Flash of lightning, blah blah blah. What I saw on the inside. Okay. Okay, so we can just do that one, I believe. Uh, present. This, right? Yes. We're almost there. Oh, yeah, here here comes the objection injection. Super objection sandwich. All right, broken tip. I think we're almost there now, right? Okay, here's the recap. Yep. There must be a broken knife, another broken knife. Uh, there is a good thing I didn't keep spamming the button. I gotta say it right here. I don't have evidence of that knife. Oh, I think that was, that was right. The answer lies in the past, two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award ceremony. Or, this is a picture of the award ceremony. Ah, what is it, Mr. Edward? It's the, it's the, the broken murder weapon. What is the award prosecutor marshal's holding? As we concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this war award. There we go. We're back. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out his knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in this, this, in this dangerous situation. But that, that cannot be. Oh, then why not, Mr. Edward? Because if the King of Prosecutors and Ward Knife was the murder weapon, the murder and the victim should be reversed. What do you mean? I mean, this man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall's shit dog. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> But the prosecutor is the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? 
We're uncovering a rat's nest is what's going on. It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Emma, Emma. Yeah! Wait, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? Please, please. The one with the bad picture scribbled on the back. Is that the jar? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? Oh no. That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me. Was that the symbol on him? I'm confused. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Could you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Guy? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. What's happening? When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed towards both of them. I think... I think you knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I sure I saw his shadow. Huh? This is certainly most unusual. That thing was just built though, wasn't it? Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now rest the... Oh, Lana, where are you coming from? Stop, please. Don't pursue this any further. Oh, see, we're on to something. Lana, what's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. She can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Scott, you've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Darlings. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. Bailiff! Please detain the defendant. Oh, shit. It seems to be finally getting to the core of the matter. Oh, no. When I saw that man raise his knife... You say, yeah, that man. Who is it? I assume you referred to Joe Dark? Yes. At least I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office report. Then you. I panicked and rushed towards both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? What else could I have done? I was about to stand Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as, as, but as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. I didn't know that at the time. And then Dark Guy knocked me down. I can think of was, I'm gonna help the other person. Neil needed to take him out. Neil was probably ordered to take him out by Gant. Right? I, I think I knocked away the man with the knife. <laughs> What do you mean, you think? It, it all, all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. Miss Guy was almost killed before she witnessed... Before she was witness to a murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, a little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was very brave, young girl. So then, oh wait, what you did was very brave, young girl. So then, what happened next? Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. Are you sure about this? Of course, see? I even drew a picture of him here. Hmm. That's gonna end up being the inspiration, but... 
It was the chief of detectives who taught, thought of this hideous beast. And that was just this year. A blue badger, badger didn't exist two years ago. It's all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before. Now I finally remember. Oh brother, just when you thought that that thing had caused enough commotion. Tellers, where in the room did you see them dancing? He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. His shadow? So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. Objection! This is pointless. That thing couldn't possibly exist two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well, or that way may well be. Well, what's part of this what caused her to think she saw what she said? Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. I don't. So I'm gonna say. If so, then by all means, tell us what this shadow really was. Was it the goofy ass fucking jar? What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger really? Who is this blue badger really? I might know. The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she certainly she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looks similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting on this in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it this witness saw in this instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look like. Blue badger himself. Maybe. Maybe. Some kind of telescope. I mean, it, whatever it was, it has to be in the room, right? Because if you look, it's there in this photo. There's two big windows in the room. We know that murder occurred in that room. What if I just say this? That'd be funny. I don't think that's it. Fuck it. Because there's, there's this, this is the only goofy thing. The mysterious blue badger was, in fact, this. Oh, was this right? It did. Uh, what exactly is that? I have no fucking clue. I believe, or I believe it's some sort of jar. It's the worst jar ever. But Mr. Wright, it doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Ah, oh, shit. Maybe I was wrong. Indeed, it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? I tried that, and it still looked that way. A viewpoint. I gotta show them. I gotta show them. Oh, fuck. I gotta show them the correct angle. What? I tried this and nothing looked right. Oh. Wait. The broken one. Gotta make it more look like. Shit! Allow me to ride and remind the case that hinges to find. Alright, this case hinges on the witness's drawing. If this ride can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept his claim. Maybe I should rotate it vertically a bit more. Oh, 
Come, Mr. Ray, you can do it. I've got to show them the correct angle to make it look like this. How that... How was that not right? Did I do the other way? No way. Well, the, the floppy things are more... Obviously, the, it's the jar, right? Oh, hey, Kira, welcome back. This part is crazy awesome. There's an angle that works. There's an angle that looks pretty much perfect. We set it and rotate it vertically. The top horn isn't a handle. Oh, I almost had it. I just need to do a little bit more. Controls suck. Well, we already tried that angle. Right? And I already tried this angle. The base should be in the back pointing up so it looks like a visible horn. Like this guy? I already tried this angle, though. And it said no. See? Oh, wait of the uh the jar the weird fucking pedestal like this way fuck Objection. this is annoying as fuck the base should be in the back and pointing up so it's visible like a horn All right so this is the base right the base should be in the back and pointing up so it's visible like a horn. Like this. Oops. I tried this angle though. Not like that. So I'll reset it. Uh, there's no reset button. Okay. So this is good enough reset. Okay. Rotate it 180 degrees horizontally. So this way. Right. Oops. Like that. Th 
Oh, that handprint. That's gonna be the handprint on the, the leather piece, huh? I'll see it. And then... Then you said I needed to do it up like a horn, right? That looks upside down. It looks like the other, it should be flipped. If you fully invert it, you've gone too far. Keep rotating horizontally. How much though? I did it 180. And I already did this. This doesn't look anything like it. Get the hole in front and slightly more than, than that. Like this, and then slightly more. God, this is so annoying. Like, what I'm doing looks close enough, but it's not close enough for the game, I guess. I guess. You just need. Are you serious? Oh my god, this is annoying as fuck. God, this is painful. A little more like... To what point? Because it's ridiculous if it's that fucking... Oh, fuck it. I'm Googling it. Um, Phoenix right rotate jar. Because that's annoying. Anyone else wanted to punch a hole in the wall to the jar rotator? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, it's not just me. Okay, uh, here's a picture. Alright, uh, flippity, floppity, floop. This, rotate, nope. This, rotate, here we go. Oh, nope, it's this way. Eh. Ah, I'm getting my buttons backwards. Here we go. Goes there. Rotate. That looks close enough. Oh, that's the picture. Dude, that's the fucking picture. This is a pain in the ass. Okay. 
I'm doing the pictures that are online and it's not working. This is ridiculous. Who put this puzzle in here? You hate people. Okay. This is agony. I can't believe this was a real puzzle. Who designed this? You hate gamers. Trying to line it up to their stupid coordinates. Oh my god. Is this where we're done with Ace of Eternity? Because this is bullshit. This is hot garbage. This is straight hot garbage. Ugh! I can't believe they made this a fucking puzzle. This is garbage. Oh my god. This is agony. The third time I played the game, I recorded my playthrough all and had to cut out like five minutes of me trying to solve it while even looking at the correct answer. Oh. <laughs> it took me 15 minutes to get the right angle and it was by accident as well. I'd use the guide for the base. I'm sitting for 10 fucking minutes already. <laughs> if I ever see that damn thing ever, I'm gonna solve a spare. I'm gonna get on the. <laughs> okay. Oh, these posts are fucking hilarious. No, the screenshot doesn't work anymore. Uh. <laughs> sol solution's making me wanna die. Took me half an hour, even using the guide. I don't know what I was doing wrong. Fucked me up, man. <laughs> even after two years of the MVP, that picture doesn't exist anymore, dude. Screamed what for 10 minutes straight? Thanks, fam. Oh, I am not alone. Okay, I feel better. This is dumb. And the fact that, like, it kicks you out and you have to redo it all over again so you don't know exactly how close you were. This is a horribly designed puzzle. trash oh my god finally got it oh lottie 
We were just in the shittiest puzzle of all time. Yeah, yeah, go get for you. Yeah, go get for you. Go get for you. Okay, hey, go. Go get for you. Oh, you dropped it. How you doing, Lonnie? Oh, that was fucking agony. That was a terrible puzzle. No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. And it had to have that horrible music to go with it. Nope. It can't be. Order! Order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remain one question remains. What's your will you go out with me, see Mr. Wright? What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jaw. That doesn't change anything. Except there was a piece in his evidence. We're finding out the creepy Wolverine man uh, is culprit. We're gonna try to prove it that it wasn't uh friend Lana. I'm afraid or I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. You see. You see, this changes everything. There's blood all over this jar. Indeed. Very well then, please tell us. It's different now than we know the witness than we know the witness saw this jar. Murder weapon, the murderer. Uh what's different now? The murderer is different. Murderer. I'll need to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Oh, is he going to show us the floor, floor plans? Where? Where? The location of the jar is shown in this picture taken on the day of the crime. Uh huh. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. That body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. Witness testified to so we're so. You ready for some obje objection sandwiches, Lonnie? Yes, and it seems and these two facts that reveal that what actually transpired. <laughs> Excuse me. You see. The struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Scan's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office? I mean, it's across the way, but there was no blood on the other side? Yes. Why would he do that? There's no reason. Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? Don't ask me that question. I finally figured it out. I have no idea what he's figured out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. She knocked away the... The jar? In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent, sent the jar flying? That would have to have been the impact the mad made when he knocked into the wall? Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf, shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? I don't see it still. Oh, the, uh, the statue. Ah! The suit of armor, holding a very sharp, dangerous looking sword. Yes. Ooh. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the king of prosecutor's trophy. No, no. Is the right you can't be thinking? Yes. There's another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility. Of course, the perpetrator would have no idea. But nevertheless, 
I, I don't know if I can go through with this. He's too right. What's the matter? If an event took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, she killed him. Don't say it. Oh, this poor girl. Oh, she's going to need all the therapy in the world. You mean Mr. Marshall died because of me? Oh, that's terrible. Oh. Ah, fuck. Oh, God. Lana's really going to hate us now. Never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life, and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Oh, this fucking sucks. Oh, she's gonna kill us for sure. What? What do you say? I'm sorry, Miss Guy. Given the circumstances. No dark murdered prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine, th imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about Emma, what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. You wanted this to end a minute ago. Tell me, do you have any sort of conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Oh, no. The handprint. The evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes. It certainly would be difficult to prove this without evidence. If we don't have ev if we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Shit, Edward, don't do that. Hmm. Touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one, one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean? What do you mean, Edward? I mean, the possibility that the victim was le has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one matter or another. That's... that's impossible. Hello, Mr. Wright. It's the only possibility he's left you. A message from the deceased? Does such a message exist? No fucking idea. I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Is it? You're right. Will you stop at nothing to prove my sister is a murderer? Don't be mistaken, Miss Scott. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There's only one thing we seek. Truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us a piece of evidence that contains a message from the deceased. I don't fucking remember. Victim's memo found in the trunk. Parking lot.
I'm gonna try this. No way. This is the message from the deceased. Right. Now then, this is a message from the judge. <laughs> oh. I guess that wasn't right. The first time it cut out the music, made me think I did it right. If a dead person left it behind a message, it would have to be written form. That's the only logical conclusion. It's gonna have to be on the the jar, but it didn't look like there was a word. You better be careful or you might wind up deceased yourself. Let's try this again. Alright, maybe try the um No that means you're right. Oh the evidence. Maybe. Is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, so we're going to just speak the killer's name? That thing, that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. <laughs> the message was left here on the surface of the jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like it looks like someone wiped away the blood. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there's a line here, running blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines? Oh shit. They did a terrible job cleaning off that blood. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few pure precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. And that someone apparently wiped away. The blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points. And the victim's message will become apparent. That's a little suspicious. No. Mr. Ray, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor! I believe... These message or these blood stains will reveal to us the answer. Someone is a horrible job at clean cleaning this shit. I've got, to, I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written given the circumstances. His murderer's name. What? Just no, never noticed that. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocent. That's why I've been, that's all I've been thinking about this. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Ilana. Now we're proving Emma did it. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out to like, like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. She cleared it? You did, you, whoever cleared that, or cleaned that, did a horrible job. Of all people, she may not, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Sky. Oh, that poor girl. That's terrible. See, brother, can't I say I didn't warn you? Can't I, can't say I didn't warn you? Chief Kant, do you understand the implication of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his, his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Wait, is he a good guy? He can be a good guy. Uh, yes, worthy. Because of you, an innocent man was sentenced to death. Not only that, 
How do you use forged evidence to ensure his conviction? He wasn't innocent. He killed like four of the people. Objection! Drew Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Did you know we aren't defend we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if it wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Despite any what anyone may say, the fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? He might have sentenced a man to his death. He, he killed a bunch of people. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, 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 order! Wow, that sneezed throughout my neck. I can't even say order loud. The devil's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where the trial is headed, no one knows. Fuck. Oh my god, there's more. Oh my god, there's more. I have all these messages on my phone, but none of them will show what the message was. There it goes. That was weird. Gifts have been ordered. Lonnie apparently auto orders the gifts. Sweet. Do 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 do. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Don't worry about it. It's my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. You do that all the time. Uh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Wait. Detective Gumshoe, what is it? Does he... Does he have his own music? No. You've got a lot of nerve, pal. I mean, get Detective run all around while on duty. And just drop it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. I take it Lana's having you run errands again? Let me tell you, this is just... This is the last time, pal. Yeah, she asked me to give you this... This to you... If there was a break in today's trial. That's adorable. Evidence law. Edward was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Ray? Seems so. You can at least study some evidence law, really. <laughs> the chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message message she said you're planning to take him on you only need this book him or him I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough raid oh my god we might have an actual full another stream ahead of us from Miss Sky explains the two rules of evidence law evidence law securely slipped into pocket doesn't look like that book will do you any good now though all that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence that's where you're wrong, detective. Ah! I haven't figured it out yet. Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me. At me. Mr. Edgeworth! The real trial today hasn't begun yet. Hell yeah, dude. What? What else is there left to do? Your red credibility's been all root but ruined with the forged evidence you were unaware of. And Miss Guy found out she's unwittingly caused a man's death. And now, you're telling me you want to do more? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Oh man, I threw out my neck. Fucking getting old, sneezing, throwing out your neck. Are you kidding me? You're missing the point, detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely stuck a knife into a dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. First! And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end.
Bird will now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Mr. Edward? Yes, you wanna. Angry committee is just planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks him for it. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, <clears throat> normally this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, <clears throat> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edwards, may have uh, struck a bargain. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. Uh, I didn't say that. It's just, uh, you see, everyone's been talking and, uh, very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no press, pre but there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with witnesses. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edward has found a way to continue the trial. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. And it's settled. The, uh, defense may now come forward to the next witness. <laughs> Mr. Wright. You do realize this is your last chance. <sighs> if you call the wrong witness, you must save beforehand. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls. The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. This asshat! Damon Gant! The defense calls Damon Gant to the sand. Damon Gant? What does he have anything to do with this? As a defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gant has first hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? Sure. All right, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. Oh boy, you ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. Witness, please take, please state your name and occupation. What is this? Some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, you want to play hardball, eh? Please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right Oh, What's with the grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean the time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? I just think it's been pretty made made pretty clear already. There's still some things unaccounted for. Oh? Like what? The evidence hidden in your little lockbox that I stole from? Like the role you played in all of this. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. You're aware, of course, that the police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. You're fucking threatening us? Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of belief has the right to refuse to testify. What? No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the, er, relevant, relevant to the case on trial. That was completely unhelpful. Of course, such an action carries with a certain risk. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of my of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well. And very well, the witness may now begin his testimony.
Here we go. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. When we went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. Mm hmm. Oh. Succinct. Hmm. Is that when Dark was arrested? Him! He was lying on the floor unconscious. Ow! When Emma sent Neo flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear, cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. Yeah. Hit him across the face with a fucking chair. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. As I recall, ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neo was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant Lana Sky also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right! But Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I had split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say, you got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, then how did he get out of the elevator? Probably not as shocked as Neil. Was when that knife went into his heart though. That's not funny. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Did you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. But the guy was stuck on the... on the statue. Dark was also lying, collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma, cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Apparently, she had already, already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body, it had already been moved. So that means... Or so that means... He found the body near Lana's desk. That's right! I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving your body and hiding evidence are inexcusable, no matter what the circumstances. Oh, we're gonna... That's gonna come back to bite you in the ass. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't... Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. If you're going to stare at anything, you'd be, you'd be better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always a smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties Gant to the forgery? Lana did admit to forging evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow they gotta link Gant to the incident. Questioning him that day, to make a long story short, we slipped up. The power outage didn't help. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she had already arranged the crime scene. Questioning him that day, to make the long story short, It doesn't say when he split. The power outage happened. When the death happened. There's 
the time of death. Uh, stabbed in the back, died from function. Oh, it doesn't say. 7 p.m., cause of death. Died from blood loss. Weapon found on the wound was missing a tip. him that day to make a long story short we slipped up the power outage didn't help either that tells me the power went out before he made it up also didn't he say he went down This one I'm going to Google. Because... Uh... Oh, <laughs> that's actually looking up crime stuff. Phoenix... Right. Arranged the crime scene. Gant says Dark was arrested. He was knocked unconscious. Really? Okay. Um. It says. He's clearly lying. Present the unstable jar or evidence list on his fifth statement. Oh, so I was right. I just did it on the wrong statement. Okay. He claimed he had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that it, that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence are found in your office. Take this list, for example. That's the list MSK drew your picture on. This was discovered in your desk. Not only that, but a piece of this jar that was sitting in your office. It was found inside your safe. It was found where? You see, Chief Cat, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Bam, bitch! I like them apples, Chief Cat. What's the meaning of this? Oh, here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, me? What do you mean, you? Me? I don't have anything to do with that. Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Prosecutors aren't the only one capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can also do so. Isn't that right, Raito? Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. What? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Oh, poor Gumshoe. Yes, well, in light of all the, detect of the detective's presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My... My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. He's fucking millenn millennial us. Fuck you, sir. Let's see. What was it now? A jaw fragment? And a list? Ha! <laughs> For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were formed, if they were found after Doc was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Arranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Hmm. 
Mm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Been investigating the crime scene. You should have been more careful to observe protocol. Yeah, I've been saying that since the beginning. You do understand that I am the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh. Indeed. I believe I will press charges so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief. They would... But would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is... Well, you know. All right, OG. In return, though. I know, I know. That place, right? This is weird. What are these type... What are these guys? Telepathic? Evidence and forgery. For all I know... For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Why would I do that? I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? Well, have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tip. Oh, dummy. Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Rido's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe. They had proved this investigation was illegal. Nah. Never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. Suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such, a, such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery, I'm not, I'm not through speaking yet, Raito. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. Well, we know it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. <gasps> Is it all going to be on the evidence list? Oh, and wouldn't, wouldn't that be convenient? Right. The chief is talking about possibility, so as long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Raito. Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in forgery. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. In the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's, Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Kent? At the very least, there's one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh? I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have, Chief of Police. Oh? The resolution of SL9 is an insecurity promotion to Chief. That in itself is a sufficient motive. Oh, 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 that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think that I'm, I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next Chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable, inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made Chief anyway. You get one pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you do it for yourself, if you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, worthy. You don't be better than that. There are only three people I look out for me, myself, and I. Hmm. There, it's out in the open now. Aji, would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in front of it for me. Okay. That's sussy. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but the only person I truly care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. 
I don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho -ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Even his selfishness would have helped him. Someone out? Yes. True, you might not help out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone else. Mr. Raid, it appears you positively... You're positively determined to betray the chief before you save. There's a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Very well then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gad may have helped forge evidence? It could have been him. Prosecutor Laundry Sky, the defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Miss Guy fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, we would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him. That reason, of course, is. Self profit. Yep. Self profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Kent. Wait, wait, how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. You mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, <laughs> he plays with puppets? Oh, God. How did you get to be a judge? Oh, wait. You miss meeting Puppet as in someone's forced to do his bidding. Never mind. The uh, comedic timing on some of these is actually really spot on. Admit it, Chief. This is Lana Sky in forging evidence. Motive to appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you can control her. Right, oh, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? You have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, it all amounts to nothing more than just mere conjecture. Or, oh, it just amounts to nothing more than just mere conjecture. There it is. Unless, that is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about. Murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Thank you, Edgeworth, coming in to save the day again. Where are they? You better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Dude, he's just openly threatening us. It's what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. Wait! I can't even do those voices. It's hurting my neck. Oh, I can't even turn my neck. Ow. That sucks. Order. Order. I said order. Mr. Ray, you, you can't be serious. Huh? It seriously has a heart attack. It's, it's an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police or blackmail and murder. That is, uh, uh, it's impossible. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. <laughs> uh -uh -uh. It's too late, Mr. Wright. No turning back for us now. Hell yeah. He's like, I got, we did it. We did it. We got him under here. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Hell yeah. Let's get him, Edgeworth. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? If the chief of high ranking officer of the law is involved in this murder. Good question. 
Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. Ooh, that's... That's gonna bruise Zigo a bit. The, the question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence would tell. Are you see? All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it better be good. Show us the evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Da, 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 that one? When is that going to make an appearance? The Goodman? What? I don't know. How much longer do we have? Uh, there's a couple chapters ahead. It looks like. Uh... Present Goodman's lost item report. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice. Uh huh. Did Lana Sky present the ID card? Oh, what was that? That's the evidence. The ID card, Liz. It's the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There's one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner that yesterday. The sevens. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my I card number. It's your number. What? But you knew that. The safe and chief scans office requires the code to open. Seven digit code. Seven digits. You don't mean. I'm afraid so, your honor. The code was all those sevens. The same as the remaining ID card number on the list. Chief Gant. Oh, look at that face. We'd love to see it. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Mmm. Feels good. We're here. We're here. Chief Gant. What do you have to say? Nothing. Nothing. The defense search of my office was a violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law after this trial. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of, the, of this ID card. Yeah, get him! Chief Gant, so you admit it. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. What about it? I'm chief of police, whether it's the evidence room or, or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. See, he's totally okay with abusing his power. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, uh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days, Chief Grant. I'm afraid you just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? The trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. The trial's purpose is to determine the truth. The trial's purpose is to determine the truth. The chief Gant meant the victim on the day of the crime. And we need to determine one thing. What transpired in that meeting? In that case, Mr. Rain, I'm going to have to ask for evidence. Those proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. The parking slip? Edwards. Oh, sick. It's not going to make, make me burn damage. No, there's got to be something more solid than that. On that day, Detective Goodman had to go to see Chief Gant. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry to interrupt your bumblings. The court is watching. Oh, shit. Okay, I did take damage. Oops. Why don't you come meet with me tomorrow? Perhaps we can try to up your letter of combination. Regardless, you did see Detective Goodman that day. That's for evidence. Okay, what?
Oh, hold on a minute. My 14. Okay, I don't think it's there. Oh! A half written document dated can only be submitted by the chief of police. It's gotta be this. Detective Goodman had lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filed out a lost item report. He would have to give that report to Chief of Police. Get you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if you filed it. He filed it. How do I know you asked? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? He needed to? Oh, that's right, because he got into it. Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh. Detective Goodman. Oh, wait. Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and the detective Goodman could have entered the room. Hold on. Let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the chief of police, murdered poor Goodman. Yep. Exactly. But wait, there's more. The chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it. Oh, he didn't let me finish that. Sorry, but there's not, that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If he had really lent it to Detective Gooden, it would have been found on his body. Ooh! Whoa! He's going Super Saiyan. Chief Gan, you you did it. You, you did. He shit his pants. Murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in their right mind. But choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, you cannot take Delana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of detect Detective Goodman's body, of course. We're getting Mr. Wright. Their victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office that after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you, take this dear dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I do not think so. You can't. You left all the evidence we need. You prove how you move the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How could the chief remove the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence. To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used Edward's car. How would that help you move a body? Because that's like the only piece of evidence we had that we seemed useless, right? I'm going to do this just because it said useless piece of evidence. This is how you move Detective Goodman's body. Shit. Dreamer, what does that have to do with this case? I have no idea. Mr. Edwards, think back to the day of the crime. What is the screwdriver ne doing here? It's here because... Ugh. I was asked to go by Chief Gant. I was asked to go by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. I still don't get why it's significant. After the, after the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gant, Gant asked you to. Oh! You mean I? I, you were a puppet. The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. 
think it's obvious if I happen. The body is moved by that car. Interesting. Detective Goodwin's body was carried to the trunk of Mr. Edger's car. Yes, unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. You transport the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Back to the photograph, Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It was a photo of the body. It was a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe. He's gonna laugh. Your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, right, oh, but I'm having lunch with the district attorney general after this. We have to get going if we're going to make it on time for the early bird special. But the cross examination isn't finished yet. Remember? Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away from all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, were they? I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're trying to say, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Oh, he should, he should just shut his mouth. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Ray. Damn it, is the current chief of police. Please save your game. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright, Your Honor, do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Kent murdered Detective Goodman made his... this guy dispose of his body? Do I have any concrete proof? Uh... I don't think I do. Do I have any proof? Ah. Uh. Um. Present Goodman's loss. Oh, we did that. Present the screwdriver or the parking. Oh, I could have done the parking one. I have no proof yet. Okay. I didn't think so. It's no use showing evidence. I'm not sh even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present, I don't have conclusive evidence. Hmm. The OG? In that case, this course is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? Here's your tip. Oh, here's a nip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Righto. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again again today. Okay, OG, I'll leave the rest to you. Fuck! Oh, okay. Maybe we had a lot more longer to go. I warned you early, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior... Oh, this is an affront to a senior... Uh, officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. What? Ooh. Well, Tedworth got up to sleep. Lady Luck? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edwards, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is, is testimony. But Chief Kent has invoked his right to refuse to testify. There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial, someone right in the very room. Mr. Edwards, who is this person? Hmm. You say, I can't do it. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. 
Mr. Ray, does this witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't stop now. Yes, Your Honor. Or yes, Your Honor. Defense calls forth. It's gotta be Lana. It's gotta be Lana. The defendant? It's Lana's guy. She was in the underground parking lot on that day. Her task is to dispose of the victim's body in accordance with a certain so someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final residence for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. Ah, shit. All right. I should have ended stream. Oh. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Yeah. Whoa. Hold on! Chief Kent! I thought you were going to eat. Tasting nice good, Lana. Oh, he has to threaten her one more time. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to do this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. That's a fucking threat. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. That's a fucking threat, dude. This isn't good. Of course, you'd never support this such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. All right, then. I've got a lunch date to meet. That's super illegal and sketch. And no one's going to even question it. Okay, if there are any further objections, this court is now in recess. What? That... Hmm. Hmm. Looks like looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah. Thanks to your help, Edgeworth. That chief! He's something else, hey bells! Detective Gumshoe! Uh -huh. I'm not a detective anymore! Oh yeah. Sorry about that. Ah, don't worry. I've already decided where to go to work now. At your office. Oh shit. My office? Sure! I'll take the place of that top knotted girl you used to work with. Maya? Oh, what do you mean, Maya? Still! Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. You can't stun it again! How is it? He always gets, a, gets the other hand. It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Mm. Settle down, right? Remember what the judge said. But chief. But chief, that is not a right to be calculated vote. Excuse me. There were certain risks. Be considered. What risks? Is there is that gonna be in my book? I already checked the book. Risks. What do you mean by that? Can he not choose to testify afterwards? It's simple. If the chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. Got it. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Yeah! You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma! Are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Uh, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was, it was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah, I finally know what really happened. To think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all. Just to protect me. No. Uh, ever, ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone knew who, who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? Follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside. It forced herself to do anything and everything the chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Chief can't be able to fool everyone else with his forgery. But he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall under that armor. I... I see. Well, we'd better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. Look at you. I want to be there. Lana tells the truth. Hell yeah. 
Give your sister some strength. Let's go right. It's time to end this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Edgeworth, sir. I should have ended stream. We're gonna be up to like 11.30. Jibber jabber, jibber jabber, jibber jabber. Here then. If the Japan is honest, guys, please take the stat. It's Lana Sky. You are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But, Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. Sure. Nana! Not what happens to Moise! I'll always be your sister! Now then, your testimony if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. She's gonna be smart about this. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. I worked along. Whoa, wrong voice. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to his blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago, but all by myself. When I was found in Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Dude, she doesn't. Even... All right. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor. I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wade, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. What if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Yeah, this is no time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin the cross-examination. Alright, this is gonna be tough. I worked alongside Gant for years. How many years exactly? Ever since I made Cedar Detective. Let's see. I was 24 then, so that would have been five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good, coming from the same school as Mia. And again, was a respectful detective, that's why. There's no truth to his... to this blackmail theory. Think about it, Miss Sky. He didn't murder Detective Goodman. He told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do so to help your sister? No, Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized by that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. So that's why you fabricated evidence two years ago. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Oh, would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? Ooh. It seems that I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken Prosecutor Award knife was stuck in the victim's body. <gasps> Oh, she just sold, told wrong evidence. I think, right? What? Yeah, see? The prosecutor marshal died from an unfortunate accident. That's the only situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who would take the prosecutor's life. I 
much as I really want this ride, but I'll never change the statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up killed by Dark? Something like that. If that, is, if that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover her lies with more lies. Oh, just to protect me. So when you find the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's body? And then you move and then you move your body? But, well, but why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. Mine isn't that bad. Let me uh, ask for the sake of others. Why did you plant the knife? Why did you move the body? Why did you plant the knife? No, why did you move the body? When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you did... It was where you... Whoa. It was where you did it was. Chief Ken's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why, or, but the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Sky moved the body. Pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Oh my god, she's just adding more upon more. Pieces of the jar? You mean. Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you look at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. But it has Emma's name on it, so how did it break? Yeah, Marsh was dead and Drake was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there's more to that more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. I had nothing to do with Anima. So you arranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? Many times I have to tell you, Mr. Wright. Emma didn't do it. Here we are. I'm so desperate to hide that fact. You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying! She did it so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she's fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've got to get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. Fabricated the evidence. Blah 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 blah. A bloke. Broke off the tip of the thing. The pieces of the jar shattered the minutes threatened my plan. It's gotta be this. And the jar. With the word Emma on it. This guy, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life, will have been in vain. Even so, I'm compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction to your testimony. Contradiction in my testimony? He testified, and I quote The pieces of the jar, the shattered during the events, threaten my plan. That's right. You have, problem, you have a problem with that? Simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on the jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecution must have written it in his final moments. Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. In order for the victim to be able to write this message under the jar, it must not yet have been broken before he died. Uh. 
You couldn't have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Boom! You lying. Order. Order! Jar now. It would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Why'd that get loud all of a sudden? Chief Prosecutor. It seems you're... You're as in the dark as we are. About the truth towards which we were headed. What? What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece... Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Fuck. Gonna have to go through all this again? Time is it? 10.30. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. It was so dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The dragons were large, so I'm sure I got them all. I could think about how... All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. How did you do that before anyone else showed up? You mean you were the one who wiped them away? The message in blood? I was in Chief Prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the re real evidence. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. I nearly noticed the blood traces on the jar. So the jar was already broken? It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Shut up, you! Not as feeble as the judge's judgment. Zam! You were an ace detective. We never missed a... Mr. Dito, do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would have. It was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? Then why would you have cleaned it up? Yeah. No. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Seems you two might make up yet. Anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone had happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. Why? I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you what do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, you wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done? What else could I have done in that situation? Anna! I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to get, do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I sure. So I'm sure I got them all. Nope. But how could you see? Let the power out. I should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. But now I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. <laughs> emergency luminol. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. No, you didn't. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. So you legally rearranged the crime scene? Yes. I don't have any excuses for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana. I didn't know. I treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we got into the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain in the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have, have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. I think I finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. I only noticed the blood traces on the jar. No, you didn't. But it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. We say if I wiped away the blood. Why would you do that? The fragments are large, so I got them all. No, you didn't. Uh, where's that evidence? No, I don't want this. I want the... I want the list. of evidence. Half of the list was found. Yeah, I want... 
final fragment. That, okay, it does say final fragment. The sky, I believe this jar concealed the truth even you were unaware of. What? You found the final piece of the jar in Gant's office. Very safe. In the chief safe? How? I knew it. She really didn't know. It's a good thing that he kicked her out of the, the courtroom. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was still blood on it. But, but the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off him. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up in the scene. Boom! Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? She said she was thorough. I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may very that may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ah, can you believe that? Sure can. Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jaw was already broken. Oh, Dad. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jaw. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I've been not implying the person was Chief Gant. At the time, he was he was looking for dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was, something got cut off. The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide the fact for two years? Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? <laughs> Your buddy's going to jail, bruh. Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. <laughs> Simon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jaw. And pur purposely hid one of the broken pieces. Question. This is action called. Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would Chief Gant do that? Why what happened afterwards? Isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed his sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Jark. Sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the Chief's puppet. Ow! Bite your finger so hard! No, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up most foul lies to defend their clients. I'm defending you. <laughs> foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm. I guess you do seem that type who likes to twist the truth. What the f this guy? Wait a minute. What if we're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap? Is the fucking judge under his thumb too? Is something wrong, Mister Wright? Lana. Or Lana may be right after all. What do you mean, right? You do tell that lies and Mr. Wright. This <laughs> guy. Please testify once more. What? If that evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's then Emma's Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But uh, I don't remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. Oh dip. I I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may, may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. Oh, shit. All right, the witness may testify once more over the final time. Oh, I'm... All right, well, we're stuck into this. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on the suit of armor's sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. My chief can't help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. 
if it all really was fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor sword. You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. Oh, I just got goosebumps. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. I don't remember seeing a picture like that. I must have known. He must have right. She really does have faith in you. Fucking genius. Oh. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember sending a picture. Any pictures from Lana? Lana said she gave it to you this morning, Rank. I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check the evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. She gave me something? That must have been a... Oh. I may... It didn't let me do this before. It didn't let me do this before. I would have looked... Hey, there's a picture here. You crafty bitch. I love you. Oh. Oh my. This is the actual crime scene. No other detectives saw the crime scene like this. Since I contracted, I contacted criminal failures there somewhere. Only after I had rearranged everything. On this picture inserted into the course record, crime scene photo from the chase two years ago. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut off from his vest! Could that be? That's the handprint. The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? This is a handprint, isn't it? Red cloth and a fingerprint on it. Whatever fingerprint those are must be the real murderer. Oh fuck. What? With those fingerprints. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, you should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin cross-examination. Oh, shit. We're going to be stuck here for another hour. Good night. I didn't even get to do anything. Fuck you. You don't get to testify. Come now, Aji. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen. Chief Kane. What, now you want to... Make me out to the, big, the bad guy, too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. You can't, bitch. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. That means you forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. Yeah, suck it, ugly. This must be what that, that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tightening around your own neck. Oh, get him, Edgeworth! <clears throat> oh, Super Saiyan negative six. Ah, so what? You think I'm worried? Sorry to disappoint you. But I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can, I can still present evidence. Yes, it's true. Wait, you mean he forges evidence, though? You should have some conclusive it. Concise it. Concise evidence? I don't, I didn't see what the word was. No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, right -ho? Oh, he knows that we took the, the piece. I have been keeping quiet about it. You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves from knock over Neil Marshall causing his death. You're admitting that you knew that piece was in your thing. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. It, is this true, Mr. Wright? If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm sure to be made out as a murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. Maybe try to conceal anything. 
You'll be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make the wrong decision. So I present that piece of evidence. The one that shows you really killed Prosecutor Marshall. I want to say no. Because... We need to prove that he did it, right? Yeah, I'll take that risk. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present to this time. What? You lie. We need him to tell us that he hid evidence in his locker, right? Chief Gant? You. You opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. The conclusive evidence. You're admitting that you had evidence in your safe. I don't know what you're talking about. Shh, Emma. It's all right, why don't you show them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know whose fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this picture. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. There! That's what we needed. You mean you had this? Did you say? What? That means you. The chief of police. I've been concealing evidence. It's going to be the biggest scandal in the history of police department. Boom, bitch. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the call, right? Who? Well, I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean you admit to it? Wait, for serious? I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use this situation to control Lana. So you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister. And when she saw the scene, she would ask for my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. Told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room ended up using the evidence to get Joe Dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I had two pieces of evidence. This was before Aunt Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance. Of course. Insurance. I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for? A fool? I don't make... I didn't make a police chief by dumb luck. See this jaw fragment? I hid the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. If you fabricated all the evidence... If you fabricated all the evidence... What's to say you didn't fabricate the message on the jar, too? Oh, ho, ho. Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean... You mean that piece of cloth? Come on, Raito. Pop it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So you admit to it then, Chief Gant? They were hiding the cloth to cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being called, being chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Hmm. Really, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have evidence you could present. Foolish move, right-ho. You should have shown it to that before it was too late. Oh, shit. I'm gonna lose my license. It's fine. It's worth it. It's been a long battle. The moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. Oh, do I show the evidence? Oh, 
I can't show the evidence. Now it's too late to show the evidence now. Besides, even if I did, I just exposed that poor girl's fingerprint. Right. Think hard over these circumstances. The circumstances we talk about then and now. There's one major difference between the two. What you waiting for that difference? So, I just figured out my plan. Fuck. Mr. Wright, this is your only chance. Your Honor, I do have evidence to present now. All right, then, let's see this conclusive evidence. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. Is it? Unread. Oh. Wait. Oh, my headset's dying. Unregistered evidence must be present to be relevant to the case on trial. This isn't relevant to the case on trial. Uh... The case on trial is Sky murdering Goodman. But that evidence is related to Marshall being killed by Emma Sky. So it doesn't fit rule two. Rule one, it could be fulfilling because the chief of police is saying, go ahead and do it. Um, What if I just say this? Is you with your opinion, please? I think Mr. Wright's humor has improved at the expense of his defense. Better polish up your defense, Mr. Wright. Fuck. Come on, Mr. Wright. Oh. Come on, Mr. Wright. You remember that thing with the murderous handprint on it, don't you? Oh, did I fuck up? It's not approved. All right, walk through. Uh. Uh. You sure you would never figure out the crime you kept the most yep i can't believe a piece of cloth yeah it knows you have it judge asked you to present it show evidence and present the piece of cloth he doesn't want me to do that this isn't approved let me verify this once more on the day of the crime you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest oh yes at least you finally brought it out into the open there's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecute or the Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean it could not have been forged? It must be authentic, conclusive, conclusive evidence. Oh, oh, oh. you're as slow as the uptake as ever, worthy. What? Think about it. I don't had it all this time, present. Had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he is reluctant to do so. Why would that be? I mean, you already know. You know whose fingerprints are on that. Uh, Mr. Wright, do you really know? Shit, I'm sorry. Whoever the fingerprint must be belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person to whom these fingerprints belongs to. Take 
Emma? Emma Sky? What? They're mine? I'm sorry, Emma. But why? But why? Why did you tell me? Oh ho ho! You're really something, Raito. You knew this girl did it all along. You still tried to pin the murder on me. It was true. You had to be true. This girl. Really did shove the prosecutor marshal to his death. Ah! Uh, I think I fucked up. Um. Uh. How could you? You, you monster. Miss Guy. You know those, those fingerprints. Those were all along yet, you. You acted like she really didn't. Miss Guy. It's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. Ha! I'm afraid it's over, boy. Not only this trial, but your career, too. You have purposely concealed this conclusive evidence. That's my friend. It's a serious offense. Coming from the police. Chief of police that conceals his own. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer? Before I do that, there's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, then what's that? Who really killed the prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you are absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was in sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mr. Ray, this piece of cloth. What could it possibly contradict? What? Chief Gant, your tyrannical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Whoops. The piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Wouldn't it? There would be blood all over. Oh, there's blood under his undershirt. And what exactly is this supposed to be? Uh oh. This is a picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. Oh, this might be right. So, where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes, his shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. It's just the soak of the blood. That's only natural. His lungs, no doubt, were punctured. Blood poured out of his mouth. Oh, with that piece of cloth. Okay, I was right. Wait, there's no blood on it. Ah! Since the disguise fingerprints are on this cloth, there's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at the time. This, this is nonsense. Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he was sh shoved aside. He most likely, he did that on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Miss Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor's sword? Oh, that's fucked. <clears throat> then to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death. Said person proceeded to write her name on the jaw with the victim's blood. The jaw that they then broke into purpose, broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. All goes super C in negative 12. Remember what you admitted only moments ago? That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of cheating insurance. You proved that you were the actual murderer. Suck dick. Oh! 
finally all over, is it? You don't get to object, bitch. <laughs> oh, that was close, Raito. You almost had me. Yeah, you're sweating up a storm. You're moist as fuck. Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute these allegations? You see? That, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Ready. Ready. What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. <gasps> See? That's the thing I was trying to bring up. Remember, Oji? Early old Rido here concealed that piece of cloth. Till then. Because <gasps> at this point, he didn't give us permission. So I think it counts now. But your excuse, Rido. You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Your Honor. I don't have any evidence I can present. See, I can. I don't have any I can present at this time. And then he gave us permission. Oh, well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At that moment, at that moment, the piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. Oh, woo. did you actually think you could best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. You forgot about the second rule, asshole. Or the first rule. We read Mr. Gaines' claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edward. True. Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Hmm? Well, Mr. Wright. It seems at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright. Do you admit it? I do purposely and illegally concede this piece of cloth. I did not illegally conceal it. I admit, I refused to present it at one point. Aha! So the evidence is illegal. But it ain't it. No, it isn't, Mr. Gann. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. Bam, bitch! What do you mean, you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved in presenting evidence. No, oh, Edgy. Don't listen to his lies. He's nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. Shut your mouth. There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well, let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present the evidence. If you can prove your con conduct was done in violation of the law, then do so now. I got this book from the queen. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. <laughs> the child's book. What's this? What's this? I've done my homework too, Chief. Indeed, Emma Sky's fingerprints were on the piece of cloth. However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. What? You see, it's written right here in this book. Second rule of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of, uh, approval of the police department. I found this piece of evidence myself inside your safe. It goes without saying, I did not have the approval from the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And here's the crux of that matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to prove the re relevance. Between the cloth and NSL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want, to, you want relevancy? Just take one look at this picture and. Shut your pie hole when I'm talking. Sorry, but. Sorry, but you can recall. When was this picture presented? Yeah, we shown only a few minutes, moments ago. Oh. He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, the piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Emmengand. Oh, suck my big dick. You yourself confessed to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out a piece of the victim's vest? Oh, yes. Oh, feels good. No. Oh. It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. 
Use the chief of police to personally prove this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest is the one who stood before the prosecutor marshal in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer and the one there's only one person who could that could be. Damn it, Gant. Why would he kill them though? The killer was you. That was creepy. <laughs> oh, he's going crazy. He's exercising the demon. Holy shit. I didn't like that. What time is it? 12 o'clock. I knew that I've gotten, I should have gotten rid of him. That good for nothing scum. For two years, he's been snooping around the department trying to get something on me. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insists on hounding me. Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, and then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman? Yeah, that's right. Why would you have a problem? If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you've got to help me. Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card, or he stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden, he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? Can you please reopen... Could you please reopen the investigation, Chief? You can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many unanswered... There were too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker. And as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me, but I never thought he'd bring up his whole nine. That's when I saw it. That accursed knife. So why? Why did you kill him? I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worried so much about the floor, I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint on Detective Gumshoe's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. And he put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke a trunk, but that, what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. <sighs> what a dick. <clears throat> Leaving the prosecution, prosecution's cars aside, how? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have the time to pick up and choose what to take. So, you left the jar fragments in the glove. Yeah. It looks like it was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. Hi. Hi, Bubby. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well, much to my dismay. Big evidence doesn't hold up very well upon a close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, would you? Where? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and example to others in the force. I'm sorry to learn that you are no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Oji. Thanks for all the memories, though. 
Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you got Rhino here. And Worthy, with these two around, you can't go wrong. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. He's clapping to the beat of the music. There are two things I want to understand. Yes. First, your sister never hurt anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky, you no longer have any reason to keep silent. All right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. In that time I had to help. In that time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. Oh shit, she's going to prison for a long time. So, it seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. Why couldn't you get out of all of your trouble? My mind. What high standards you have. A rookie. I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows? A few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Oh, the smile! I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. This guy. And to you too, Mr. Ashworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. It was nothing. <laughs> Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, you rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. Stop it. You only did my job. In any of this case, it seems a good self-examining. Self-examining is on the order for all of us. It's gay. Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent of murder, however. Although the chief react mailed you, the fact that you still acted as his accomplice. The trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Oh, that makes me happy. Maybe this trial has gone on far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, Squared finds the dependent Miss Lonic Sky not fucking guilty. Confetti for everyone. Oh my god. <gasps> that is all. That is all. This court is adjourned. Holy shit. I should have ended an hour and a half ago. At long last, it's finally over. Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook. At least she wasn't convicted of a murder she didn't commit. Oh, that's, that's not it. Just now, after that. I can see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And you, Mr. Edgeworth. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these few past few days. You've done well. Damn it, gums you ruining the moment again. Hope I'm not interrupting, pals. Uh oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. Hey, <laughs> Tisaka Gumshu, what is it? You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making detectives run around all on duty. And drop it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. You said last time. Hey, lighten up, pals. I'm only kidding. Are you here because my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came today because of you, pal. You keep his job? Me. Hey. That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Oh, give her a big hug. Lana! Should you be doing this? Or should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell if you won't. I love Gumshoe. Emma. Uh -huh. Ouch, that hurt my throat. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day two years ago. It was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. Sis! 
I asked Gan to help me cover up the truth. I thought I was doing it for your sake. Now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. I had to. It was the only way I could get, make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I... I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you're really doing it for me. No. Ah! I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis! I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm... I'm happy now. You're... happy? Of course! You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. Now you have. Except she's going to jail. <laughs> oh, Emma. Emma! <laughs> big hug! Yeah! Big hug! No one can change the past. One thing that... One thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for mistakes, you ask? Because in so in so doing, we can find a way back to our rightful path. And it's from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. At least that's what I felt watching the two scissors make up. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe. Me! Thank you both for all that you have done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? Edgeworth? Stop hiding in, coming over here. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Where was he hiding? I just came to say, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth! Right. Well, uh, I'll be going now. <laughs> oh, goodness. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. It's too late for me. No matter how what anyone may say, I realize today that I can't correct my mistakes. It's very worse. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. One day you will understand. Oh, and believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. So he's gonna join a team or something? They're not gonna go alone? I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time. But Edgeworth, who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant in. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth. Wrong voice. Edgeworth. Don't you understand? Cameron Gant and your mentor, Andrew Van, Van Karma, were both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said in order to fight crime on my own, I need a weapon. It may be true. But think back to this trial. You weren't alone. Yeah, boy, join my team! We're working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that, our mission, we were able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Uh, yeah. Was this a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show what Lonnie's talking about! Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edward nor I would have been able to find on our own. Uh Evidence that neither of us would have been found on our own? Open. 
Present the evidence list. The evidence list? Oh, because we each shared it. Okay, I would not have put that together. It, it's the picture I drew. A counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore them as pictures. Didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Edgeworth. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth! If you'll excuse me, there's still some loose ends I need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Yeah! That scared me. Edgeworth, what will you do now? But whatever you do, just remember, you can let what happened kill the prosecutor in you, or you can let it happen, help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. I know. Oops, I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I better we get oh. I better we get going too. Okay. And I'll be by the visit soon. Seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. Yeah, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation! That duck is adorable. It's the first book I ever bought. That he had won. Thanks, sis! I will. And so another case called comes to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Faith that their lives have only just begun. You've only just begun to live. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. A journey to rediscover myself. Well! Don't go trekking off yet? Just yet, pal. Huh? What is it, detective? There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. What? I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks at the prison are a different story. Huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard and order to sneak her out for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap either. Huh? Where'd you go, detective? I didn't know you had a wild sign. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright here's the one who'd be putting the bill. <laughs> huh? Huh? Is he course for yes now? What do you think I could afford with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, pal. Huh? 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Why is it I suddenly feel like I want to scream? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay for it? Pay it off together. Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys, let's go. Ha! <laughs> we did it! We beat the Ace Attorney trilogy. Oh, I still feel like we could have, or we should have ended an hour, almost two hours ago. We could have had a whole other stream, and now I'm up to almost midnight. I'm going to the office early in the morning. Oh, this sucks. I just didn't know how close we were. I didn't want to. I didn't want it to end and it be end up being like only 30 minutes. Oh, also, yes, I took that thing off because itchy as hell. Also, we can we can switch to this because yeah, the stuff is still showing in the background. Plus, I'm slightly easier, so it's fine. We're gonna let these go. I'm gonna take this off my head. Yeah, you said that I was gone from over there. In the end, though, if we look beyond unauthorized investigation in the chief's office, if we penalize you anymore, it'll be worse than firing you. Oh, there's stuff happening. Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show. You can't shake me off that easily. Oh, things actually happening. Maybe? Maybe sometimes? Maybe, maybe sometimes not all the times? Or other times? 
I don't know. But since it's just music, oh my god. My new mission is the guard's main entrance to take care of Millie! Can you believe it? I've been demoted to security guard. My partner is keeping an eye on the interns for me today. I'll show them those and I'm going to make a detective. Yes, sir. And I can be just as afraid as a dick gun shoe. I'm glad I didn't have my things or headset on because that bleep noise of his is grating. Hurts the ear holes. Guarantee that's playing the music, isn't it? Someone take it out. It's an atrocity. Take it out. I was convinced that handprint. Oh, it's gone. I was convinced that handprint was going to have something to do with it. Or in the smear. Nope. What is it? Can, can you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this into me. She's gonna see one of these guards, it seems. Well, cowboy, looks like you did it. He even gave Bambina back her smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get their water? I don't even know if that was... It's different not hearing your voice through the headset or through the mic going through the headset and just staying out here. So I'm just kind of hoping that feeling the voice is right. It's like we won't be singing. It's like we won't be seeing each other for a while. Yes, snacks. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes bitter as defeat. The bottom layer is as sweet as victory. That's cool. It seems to be concerned about theme. It's a hot sale around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. Oh, why did Gant kill the dude? That felt very random. He had no reason to kill the guy. He just wanted to open a case. Was it just because they framed him? And they didn't want it to be framed? But why would he frame him? I'll never forget that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left. <laughs> anyway, he said he's been doing uh, something or other for uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I better be off. Uh, oh no, I forgot my gavel. Tell me, I gotta go. I think you need to think about retiring, Judge. Like, was that really why he, he killed those people? It was like, they didn't want to see that they fabricated evidence to convict the serial killer? But he was already a serial killer. Oh, my. Oh, nothing suits the soul like fresh country air. Still something I do, Miss Sarah Matthew, in your objection. Still, I can't go back and tell him full fledged spirit medium. Mr. My uh, afternoon training is about to begin. Coming. Well, see you around, Nick. Oh, did we see Maya again? Um. Like, they, they already knew the guy was a serial killer. Why did they have to fabricate evidence for that last. I don't know. It's something Something's not adding up. That he would be like, oh god, I'm gonna kill like three people now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth. Oh god. He's like, oh, Mr. Edgeworth. How about you, your tea? Are you cheating on me as the bellboy, Edgeworth? What's going on? Did he resign? I think he's cheating on me with the bellboy. How scandalous. That's Uya Minami. How do I know that name? Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to New York. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be all right. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Safe, have a good trip. Oh, open this. Rotate. Oh, there's a note. 
Did you give me that? Is this for me? Am I looking in her own book and stealing her own shit? Oh, that's cute. Adorable. Wait, hold on. You guys might want to see that. Hold on. There you go. Adorable picture. Capcom! Rise from the ashes. We did it! I got, I got an achievement. Oh. Goodness gracious me. Okay. Um. As soon as we get to the main menu. Okay. We're done. We're done, right? Hold on. Uh. Is it dirty? Wait, are we done? How do I know if I'm done? I just did these attorney ones, right? Oh my god. We have a lot of Ace Attorney left. That was just the fifth one. That was just the last episode. The first one. I have Justice for All, which has at least two. And I have Trials and Tribulations. Oh, who are you? Which has at least two. Okay. We have a lot of Phoenix right to go through still. These games are uh, pretty long, so uh, we'll revisit these um, soonish. Um, we're going to be playing some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, getting through that. Hopefully, we'll get back onto some of the Baldur's Gate 3 dirge run, and then maybe we'll revisit this again in the future. I know Elden Ring DLC is coming out soon, um, and some other games I had my eye on coming out in the next few months. Uh, I just can't recall them at the moment, um, but I'm keeping track of them in the Discord. But, my friends, I'm not going to go for a raid tonight because I'm an hour and a half over time. I need to go eat some food and pass out as quickly as possible because I have to get up for work early in the morning. So I don't know if I'm going to end up streaming tomorrow. Um, I guess we'll find out. Um, but feel free to join the Discord or uh, hit, the, hit the notification to know if I'm going live. If you're interested to know if I go live, usually I post uh, notifications and stuff in the Discord if I'm not. Uh, or if I'm canceling stream or something, or if I'm doing a bonus stream. But otherwise, um, just hit the bell and you'll be notified. I don't know why I'm so laggy right now, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Remember to spay new to your pets, adopt a shop, donate to a rescue if you can afford it, or open up your house up to the possibility of fostering. It's a very rewarding experience. It helps those animals and rescues out that are very much you need. Anyways, I'm Faceif. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you guys so much for letting me be a streamer tonight. I heavily appreciate it. And I'll catch you all next time. See ya. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 ye